Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turn is speaking to Frida Gustafsson about Vikings Valhalla, which is streaming now on Netflix. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. And we're matching today. We're matching. We're yeah. excited. Color, yeah, <laughs> color coordinated, absolutely. I mean, it's exciting. It's even more exciting. The big announcement today, Vikings Valhalla renewed for season two and three on Netflix. I mean, congratulations. Hey, who's excited? I'm excited. I'm so excited. It's Yay. It, it's so crazy. Yeah, and the timing is great. You did like the press junket with a lot of the cast and everything, and it's like calm before the storm, like it's before it's out and everything. Is it an interesting mindset now? You're doing interviews now that it's actually out. Like obviously we don't want going spoilers, or does it feel the same a little bit? I mean, it's it's always so wonderful to be able to talk to people about the show when they've actually seen it. Because yeah. I feel like for us, we've been working on this for so long and you know, we keep everything, we play all of our cards so close to our chest because we don't want to spoil anything. We want the fans and the viewers to be able to witness everything for the first time. Um, but it is so magical now when the show is out, it's doing amazing. It's finding viewers all over the world, which is incredible. I know. And to now be able to say that, yeah, we're going to continue the show for a bit. We're continuing the journey. It's so exciting. I mean, from the moment the trailer is dropped, just from the viewer perspective, I mean, there was just this excitement and just this, like, finally it's coming moments. You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of one of those. Um I feel like the cast and crew, and I'm curious what you think about this, is it a very interesting situation with Vikings Valhalla? Because... We're familiar with, like, the world before with Vikings on history and Netflix and everything. And it's the same kind of universe, like, hundreds of years later with Vikings Valhalla. But it's completely different characters, completely different kind of storylines. What's that like for you? I'm curious about that. That's an interesting kind of situation for a storyteller, in my opinion, Frida. Absolutely. I mean, you're nailing it. You know, that's exactly what we all felt. I was a huge fan of Vikings and yeah. especially of Lagertha. And when I heard that there was going to be, you know, a continuation of the of the saga or like, you know, a continuation of the universe, I was so excited, first of all, just to, to watch it and be a fan of it. And then <laughs> I ended up being a part of it, which is just more than I could have you know, ever dreamed of. But it is, you know, like you say, we're bouncing off of a show that was so incredibly successful and who, you know, found the hearts of so many people all over the world. And we felt a huge responsibility, you know, to um, to honor that legacy of doing a great show, of having a character driven story and showing this incredible time of and these incredible people of Vikings. But with that said, you know, we're we're sharing a lot of the DNA, but Vikings Valhalla is its own show. It yeah. lives in its own universe but it shares a lot of the core dna with with viking oh a hundred percent and the character growth i feel like just episode to episode like episode two and then episode three so much happens with a lot of characters just after <laughs> one episode right <laughs> yes i mean we're thrown in this journey and, and for me when i learned that i got the part of Freitas, and i you know we didn't get this the script straight away because character. everything yeah thank you so much <laughs> so thank you so much you know we we only get little nuggets so we yeah. kind of learn as we go along and as we're shooting mm -hmm. and when i first got the part i didn't even you know, I haven't even read the first episode yet. So I thought the arc for Spratus was going to be, you know, to claim her revenge. And then as a, when I got the first script, I was like, oh, 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 my God. I mean, what's going to happen now? And I love that about our show. I feel like Jeb Stewart has an amazing way of, of writing with great pace without losing detail and without losing character. And you as an audience, you're thrown on this journey that's going quite fast and i i love that i love to see you know people or stories that i am invested in i like to see them challenged with many different things and i feel like in our show you get to go on these incredible journeys with the characters when you're first kind of introduced an approach and getting kind of used to playing Fridas, i'm curious does it like when does the because this is a very strong very powerful character and i'm just curious if 
you know, reading the scripts and kind of going over things. Like, do you notice that right away with this character or does it take you a little bit to, like to sink in? Like, this is a very powerful, strong character, Frida. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I instantly when I when I did the first self tape, you know, you, you're given a few little scenes and it was the, the first time actually in my career that the character just envisioned itself in yeah. front of me. I felt like instantly I had this connection of who she was, what she wanted to say, how she wanted to say it. And when you look at the script, you can kind of see little clues the way that she doesn't say a lot with her with her words but she says a lot with her presence yes now she's a she's a person who knows how to command a room how to be powerful and how to speak for herself in ways that you know vary from someone like harold you know who's a man of many words <laughs> so for me it, it was it was always in the text and then you know you as an actor add your own little things that you feel add to the character and um i'm happy that you say that freitas comes strong comes across as a strong and powerful woman because that's that's what we intended oh 100 percent. and you all did such a great job you watch this show and you know you're you kind of get you dive into the world of vikings valhalla and it's just like from a viewer perspective it's just so breathtaking and you you really feel like you're trans forming like yourself into the world like you're really actually you're in it basically sometimes you're watching things like that i'm just curious because i feel like the mindset of you like working on something and then watching it is different but do you, <laughs> like but like do you when you watch the playback i mean it's pretty incredible to see what the cinematographers have done what it kind of looks like like this is eye candy like it's so amazing <laughs> to look at basically yeah i mean it's we're fortunate enough to shoot in Ireland, which is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever mm -hmm. been to. And the locations that we have are just so stunning. And I mean, when we first started shooting, we, the Greenlander crew, would sometimes just stand in the back lot and there would be like 150 extras and 20 ships and goats and horses and every animal you can imagine. And everyone in perfect costume and the smells and their smoke. And we just look at each other and go like, wow, someone should really take a picture of this. Like, this is this is incredible. And then we're like, oh yeah, fuck, we're, you know, we're doing a, we're doing a show. Yeah. And you'd have to remind yourself every day that, you know, the scale that we operate on is just mind blowing. And it's so fantastic for us as actors, because you basically just have to show up and the world is there. You know, it's, it's just fantastic. I wish you could come and see it on set because it's just as magnificent there. But then we have our amazing, you know, DOPs, um, who are well oiled machinery? They know each other so well, and they really push each other to get those incredible shots. So we're fortunate to just have these amazing people in every department. One hundred percent. Now, this is something I was really excited to talk to you about um, when I got this interview confirmed because you are Swedish. Yes. And so, and here's the thing: I'm a big music fan. I listen to all types of music, but I'm a big metal fan. Like I like a lot of like heavy metal. Okay, so. There's a lot of like heavy metal, folk metal, Viking metal from the Scandinavian countries that I listen to all the time. I'm just saying that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, are you maybe like you don't listen to it, but are you familiar a little bit with a lot of that music? Do you have relatives or friends that listen to that music? I'm just curious about yes. that. Yes. Yes. Hell yes. So my brother, uh, funnily enough, whose name is Eric Leif. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um yeah, it's it's so awesome. He is a huge metal fan as well. And, you know, he loves Vardruna and all of those. In like, Flames? You know, in Flames, At the Gates, you know, at and Tomb. Gates, yes! Oh yes! God. He's there for it. Shout out, Brother Eric. Oh, um, the best. Oh, in Flames? Uh, like, that's uh, I, that's one of my favorite. Got to, they call it, like they're from Gothenburg, right? So Gothenburg Heavy they are, Metal. Yeah, from the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, there's also a band called Dark Tranquility from there as well. Oh, it's so good. And again, like it kind of like when <laughs> it goes with Vikings Valhalla, listen to that music. It, it goes so well. <laughs> I have to send you, I have to send you something. So my brother made me a playlist to get into uh, because he was a huge fan of Vikings. And when he learned that I was going to do this, he was like, let me make you the most ultimate Vikings playlist ever. So you can get into your Viking spirit. So I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. It's incredible. I always listen to it before I go to war as Freitas to get me into the real like badass. That might be vibe. the greatest thing I've heard in like <laughs> months. That just makes me so excited. <laughs> because I was hoping, you know, cause I was like, yeah, I'm interviewing you about this. And I'm like, you know what? Like 
I'm gonna go. Maybe it's like she's not familiar with it. But I'm like, I have to, I have to say, it. just because it's Vikings and there's so much music from there. Like, I love it so much. Like, I'm such a big fan of that music. So it's it's one of those things too where. The, there's so much kind of happening in the show as well. I guess I just want to talk about the music the whole time, but there's everything. To talk about. But um, if you would pick one of the three things that I'm going to talk about right now that stand out, because I feel like there's a lot of reasons why people can't get enough of Vikings Valhalla. I think we talked about kind of what it looks like. I think that's one of the reasons. I think the twists and turns are just kind of there as well and are a huge reason because things happen episode by episode where you're just like, what just happened? Like, did this actually happen? And then, of course, there's the, you know, action, obviously, that we talked about, a lot of the fight scenes and everything. Which one kind of stands out for you? How it looks, the fight scenes, or the twists and turns? Are you able to pick one? Wow, that's difficult. Uh, <laughs> I want to say all of them because, you know, it's so incredible. Making a show of this scale is a huge team effort. It really takes a village. And in every single department every day, these incredible artists bring their A game. Like yeah. w we show up and everything is just so incredibly detail oriented and just perfected. So I don't, I can't choose a department because it would be choosing like stunts over camera or, you know, set uh, design over stunts. And I feel like in, in every department, everyone is doing an excellent job. But what I feel, you know, makes Vikings Valhalla stand out from Vikings is that we have this plethora of incredible female characters that are really at the forefront. They're driving the story forward and they're working together. I mean, yes. you have two incredibly powerful women like Freydis and Yal Hokan sharing a spiritual awakening, being a nurturing, you know, uplifting, a sisterhood. And I feel like that's something that really makes our show stand out. And it's yesterday was international, incredibly proud of. Yesterday was International Women's Day, so shout out to that as well. <laughs> yeah. Ladies. <laughs> Which is amazing. It no, but it's we have to give a shout out to the crew. I mean, if there's no crew, there's no show. There's no Vikings Valhalla. No. I feel like people don't realize that sometimes. Yeah, and also they made this show under the most insane circumstances because yeah. we started filming under a COVID pandemic. So everything takes so much longer. I mean, we had to get tested. Everyone's wearing a mask. And like our grip department, you know, carrying all this insane equipment up to top of mountains where we don't have roads to film under, you know, raining circumstances. They make, you know, the, the crew really are the backbone of, of Valhalla. So shout out to them. So when you get from your team and from the producers, when you get that official word where season one has a release date after kind of what you said about the pandemic and just kind of waiting on when it comes out when you finally i'm sure that's just kind of like a roller coaster of emotions where it has like a release date i feel like that is just do you remember that day yeah i remember it so vividly because for us we all had like a running gag on set where we would be like oh you know we're not actually making a tv show they just got a bunch of unknown actors and they're only rolling in between takes and they're making this like making of and all just you know making fun of us and of course that wasn't the case but because we worked on it for so long without it ever coming out it felt like it was our own little creature <laughs> and then the email ca came in and it was in cabs and it's like official release date and it I'm shaking just, you know, thinking about it because all of a sudden it's like, this is our little baby, you know, that we've nurtured and we filled all of our hard work and passion and and love into. And now, you know, the baby's grown up and has his own legs and is running across the world and, you know, showing that love to people. So it, it, it feels wonderful and terrifying at the same time. I mean, you know, top 10 Netflix all around the world. I mean, it drops on Netflix and instantly over 190 countries have access to watch the show. I mean, I feel like that will never not be scary. That feeling of just it, like so many people getting a chance to watch it. I'm not scared, like overwhelming. Like, because scary, I feel like puts it in a bad context. It's a very good thing, but it's like an over... It's, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, the the you know, you work so hard and you you know, you dedicate so much time of your life to these characters. And I completely fell in love with Freydis from the first time I read her on the page. And for her to then, you know, to, to share her with the audience, it's exciting, but yeah, it can be overwhelming. I've never worked on anything of this scale before. Yeah. And to be a part of the global Netflix family has just been wonderful. And to have your work shown in so many different countries and the messages from people that we in the cast have been receiving from 
people all over like the world that over. have been touched. Yeah. yeah, literally from all over the world has been the most humbling experience of, of my life. And so across far. all the different time zones. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's the one that I do. When it was the pandemic, I was doing a lot of Instagram lives with a lot of people on Netflix shows and everything. And we did this thing in the comments called the global waterfall, where I wanted people to say where they were from. And it would oh, be so like cool. all over the place. And the, the thing that's coming to mind is like uh, across all these time zones, you know what I mean? Like New Zealand, Chile, Argentina, like it was crazy. <laughs> It's amazing. I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's so great. I wanted to thank you so much for your time to chat about Vikings Valhalla for you. This was great. Thank you so much for your time. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. So you know what? Here's the thing. You know, we know that a season two and a season three is coming and we're just going to play the waiting game. And I'm just so happy for you and the cast that we are going to get more Vikings Valhalla. But you know what? Right now, they can watch season one of Vikings Valhalla on Netflix now, streaming worldwide. And if they already watched season one, you know what they could do, right? They could watch it again. Yeah, rewatch it. <laughs> Send it to your friends. Talk about it. You know, watch it again and again. Absolutely. And, again. <laughs> and where can people follow you on social media to keep update with everything? Sorry, what oh, was sorry, that? Sorry, where can people follow you on social media to keep update with everything? Is there Instagram? Yeah, they can follow me on Instagram at FreeDegustafson. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Frida Gustafson and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.